Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 27th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am going to be talking about some extraordinarily large bushfires that have been raging throughout parts of Western Australia in the Northwest section of Australia in particular. But before I get into that, I'd like to set a context for Australia in which Australia appears to be heading into a very hot summer. Now, the Southern Hemisphere right now is seeing a, is in a flip state of um, seasonality versus the Northern Hemisphere. And at this time it is Southern Hemisphere spring and it is heating up to Southern Hemisphere summer. And at this time, Australia finds itself in a zone of, of much warmer than normal at atmospheric and ocean temperatures as it is heating up towards summer and as it is expected to see much warmer than normal surface conditions. Before I get into the Bureau of Meteorology forecast for Australia, I'd like to also point out that ocean temperatures surrounding Australia in the north in the north quadrant, in the southern quadrant, and in the eastern quadrant are much warmer than normal. And at present, sea surface temperatures in parts of of the ocean waters surrounding the eastern section of Australia are ranging as high as five degrees Celsius above average, with temperatures ranging from about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius above average in most locations east of Australia to as much as five degrees Celsius above average. The, these warmer than normal sea surface temperatures are contributing now to concerns that Australia's Great Barrier Reef will be impacted again uh, this summer by coral bleaching type events. It's uncertain that this will occur, but it does appear that forecast trends do indicate ocean temperatures rising into a range that will provide stress to, to potentially severe stress for corals. This in association with a likely association with an El Nino event that is building in the equatorial Pacific zone and also in association with a longer term trend of human caused climate change, which is causing temperatures in pretty much all ocean zones to rise and generate more stress for corals. Now, looking at the atmospheric information or atmospheric trends, expected atmospheric trends for the summer of 2018 to 2019 for Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology shows an 80% chance of exceeding, exceeding median maximum temperature levels across most of Australia. The, the, the areas in red here show an 80% chance or higher that temperatures will exceed nor, uh, median temperatures, typical median temperatures for the base period of 1990 through 2012, which is already warmer than normal base period. So it looks like Australia is facing a much, much warmer than normal summer if forecast models are correct. So to talk about the, the main subject of this video blog, I'd just like to point out that the that Australia has recently, in over the past week to 10 days, seen extraordinary bushfire activities in association with much warmer and much drier, hotter and drier conditions in the northwestern, I'm sorry, yeah, northwestern section of Australia, which has fanned bushfires from October 11th through uh, recent days that have exceeded 2,174,527 2, acres. And the, these fires fueled by, by dry winds. And, and these are some of the biggest fires that we have seen and, and some of the largest fires on record uh, running in, in the range of, of some of the largest. Now, these aren't the largest on record that we have seen. For As Bob Henson notes, Canada's Chikanga fire in 1950 topped 3 million acres, but regardless, a very, very large wildfire. And a 
recent article in Wildfire Today provides these stunning pictures of the massive bushfires running through Australia, as well as some satellite shots. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the visible footprints of the burned areas as they occurred over parts of October. And to do that, we're going to look at the NASA satellite shot provided by NASA Worldview of this region of Australia, which saw these very extreme bushfires. Before I get into that, I'd just like to point out the scale, and hopefully you can see it, hopefully it's not blocked by my head, on the right, lower right-hand side of the map showing a 50-mile zone. And I'm going to go ahead and just trace out a, a about a 50-mile length with my cursor. So from about here to about here is 50 miles. So here to here. And, and just to give you an example of how large these burn scars are as I advance this, the, these uh, frames of satellite shots for this region of Australia. So by October 11th, we see a very large area of, of bushfires erupting in this section of Australia with a large smoke plume visible. By October 12th, we already have a very large burn scar that has already that has already appeared after a very rapid conflagration of the zone. This, this burn scar appears to be about 15 to 20 miles across. So massive uh, footprint for this very large bushfire. By the 13th, we don't, we don't have too much expansion. But by the 14th, the burn scar ranges from about here, and you can see this in the darkened areas with this uh, cluster of hot spots surrounding it to here. So nearly 50 mile long or longer extent of burn scars with a section, second burn scar appearing off to the east. By October 15th, we have a, a bit of a gap in the satellite imagery, but then by the 16th, the burn scar again expands and, and starts to wrap around in the western region of frame. We also have the increasing size of a burn scar up over to the east and another section of fires producing their own large burn scar. By the 17th, the burn scar has extended almost all the way to the coastline, ranging what looks like over an 80 mile zone in length and about a 20 to, yeah, about 20 to 25 mile width. So a, a massive burn scar in association with, with a massive wildfire, one of the largest wildfires we've seen uh, in, in any kind of uh, populated region. And this in association with much warmer than normal, much hotter than normal temperatures in Australia, as Australia is facing a, a likely much hotter than normal summer, which is also likely to produce a number of extreme impacts, including wildfires, heat waves, and damage potential damage to coral reefs let's let's hope that we don't see a repeat uh, of the damage that we saw in 2016 but but there are rising risks for damage to corals at this time now this heat you can't completely separate from human caused climate change because human caused climate change right now is is pushing the the threshold for extreme heat higher and higher and as it also pushes the threshold for these extreme heat related events, such as extreme wildfires, extreme heat waves, and damage to coral reefs due to much warmer than normal ocean temperatures. So just a snapshot of what's going on with Australia at the present time as it expects to enter an extraordinarily hot summer. And, and let's just hope that for those uh, of us who are living in Australia and in the Southern Hemisphere that it that doesn't end up being too bad. So, so thoughts and hopes for those of you living in Australia. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.